In this video, I will demonstrate how to properly configure an M1 Technology upgrade kit once all the hardware has been installed. In the kit box, you will find a document labeled VMC Retrofit Kits, Configuration and Usage Instructions. Please have a look at this document. It looks like this, and it shows kit-specific information. For example, the dip switches that need to be set on the control board on that red switch block, the service mode navigation keys, as well as um, on the second to last page, it shows the pulse validator um, settings that need to be that may need to be adjusted. So, if you're going to be in, if you intend to use a pulse validator with the installation, just make sure that the switch settings are set. As the document states, for example, if you see um, Mars VN 2500, for example, 2501, 2512, 7 on, 8 off if you're using an impulse interface. Most of the Mars validators with switch 7 and 8 both turned off, that's going to enable it for MDB. You would need an MDB harness and you could use it as a 24 volt MDB validator. So you can see there's a VFM1, that's the older validator, the oldest validator we would support, Coinco BA3032 SA. So have a look at that document. There's some very helpful information and some troubleshooting steps in there. Um, so every N1 kit comes from the factory, defaulted to all MDB payment devices, including the changer, the validator, and card reader. They're all enabled for MDB. There's no settings you would need to change in service mode to make those devices work. So if your machine is all MDB, there's two steps required. First, you need to go in and configure the motors, and second is to price the machine. Since cabinet sizes vary, the control board does, not, does need to know what motors it's going to be responsible for in the machine so it can operate correctly. The way to tell the machine what motors are going to be used is by going into service mode and configuring the motors. That's step one. Step two would simply be going into price, ensuring that two-tiered pricing is, is disabled, and then setting your pricing, and then trying some test vends. So I'll demonstrate that right now. You would hit the service mode button. This is an AP110 controller, so the service mode keys are G and H and up and down arrows. Main menu appears. I'm going to scroll down to I get to configure. I'm going to hit enter, which is H. I'm going to scroll down two more times to configure motors and hit H. Please wait is going to appear on the display followed by the number of motors that the board detects in the machine. So after you configure your motors, you can cancel out of that, hit the G key once in this case, and we're going to simply go up to price. I'm going to hit H, enter. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the price menu. I'm going to land on entire machine DP. I'm going to hit H. And I'm going to ensure that the price is $99.95, which it is, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. But it's important that you set entire machine DP for $99.95. Once you do that, go up to the top of the menu. You can set a single product here. You can price an entire tray where it says entire row. And you can price the entire machine all at the same time. For example, if most of the pricing is in the machine is $1.50, let's make the machine $1.50. And I'm going to hit H to save. So the whole machine is $1.50. Then I have two trays, A and B, that are $1. So I'm going to go to entire row. I'm going to hit enter, which is H. I'm going to enter A. And I'm going to type in a dollar. And then save that tray. Save tray A. I'm going to hit enter again. This time I'm going to choose B. Let's make that a dollar. 
and then H to save. And that's how you would price the machine. Finally, you can go up to, if you have an oddball selection, let's say A1, and let's make A1 uh, 250. 2, 5, I'm going to use the 10 for a zero key, 250, and H to save. A1 is now saved. So that's your typical MDB installation. You would just need to configure motors and then price the machine and then try some test vents. If you decide that you do want to use the original dumb mech changer, it's going to have either a 12 or a 15 pin connector at the end. Then there's a couple of settings that have to be turned on on the control board. And usually you're going to be using a pulse validator with your dumb mech changer. So I'll show you both those settings right now. Go into the options menu. I'm going to hit enter H. Now I'm going to scroll down until I see bill val. Bill val is normally set for MDB by default. I'm going to hit the H key to flip it over to pulse. So now bill val is set for pulse for a pulse validator. Card reader is set for MDB. It's always set for MDB. Please don't change card reader setting. It will cause problems. Card reader MDB. Coin level memory is typically off for an MDB installation because the changer has intelligence and so does the board. So the two devices communicate together effectively and there's no issues. So there's not, you're not going to have any problem with the machine not taking money or bills. But if you're using the dumb mech changer, it's important to turn coin level memory on. It's telling the board to look at the change and keep track of it, which will enable the validator. So if you have validator problems, it's very important that your changer is working correctly. So check that. If you ever have a validator problem, make sure your changer is able to dispense coin. So you set bill val to pulse and coin level memory on. We need to go into fill dispense mode to prime the board with some change so the machine works correctly right away. This is a new installation, which means everything is a blank slate. In order for a bill to be accepted by your validator, the control board needs to know that your coin changer is working and it can dispense coin. And so if you have a micromech and pulse installation, it requires one final step, and that's to prime the board with some coins and then power cycle the machine. So fill dispense, and I'm going to hit enter, H. I'm going to press one for a nickel, two for a dime, and then three for a quarter. In this situation, I'm using an MDB changer just for video purposes. That's why one and two do not work. But if you have a dumb Mac changer, when you press one, two, and three, a nickel, dime, and quarter will dispense. So go ahead and pay out five nickels. You can hit the one key five times. Pay out five dimes. Pay out five quarters. Take the money that just came out into the return cup and feed it right back through the changer while you stay in fill dispense mode. So I'm going to put a quarter in. It, and what the display is telling me is that there's 82 quarters in the changer. The board sees 82 uh, quarters. There's 83, 84, and 85. And after you Fill all the coins back up, simply turn the machine off, and then turn the machine back on again. And the validator should have a red solid light and able to take, enable to take bills. So that's a very crucial step if you're using a dumb mech changer and a pulse validator. Set the options correctly in the options menu, go into fill dispense, prime the board with some coins, then turn the machine off, turn it back on again, 
look at the validator, give it 30 seconds or so. It should, the double flash should go away and a red, lot, red solid light should appear. Go ahead and try some bills. Make sure you get the correct change back. If everything checks out okay, you're good to go. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps some people. Enjoy the rest of your day.